Hello, good evening, and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Nadim Majid. And I'm Sonali Mani Gubadike. We start off first with a look at tonight's headlines. Dilan Pereira, C.B. Ratnayaka, Pavitra Wanearachi and Mindy Appa resigned from the government. Application seeking an interim order preventing Harin Fernando from functioning as the chief minister rejected. 130 persons arrested following unrest in Jaffna remanded. Prime Minister will not be able to undermine the actions of the opposition. A statement from the opposition leader. To present the bookmark designed in lieu of the War Heroes Commemoration Month to President Maitri Pala Sirisena was held this morning. The bookmark of heroes which was designed in lieu of the War Heroes Commemoration Month was presented to the President by the Chairman of the Ranaviro Seva Authority, Anoma Fonseca. The bookmark was then presented to the commanders of the Tri-Forces and provincial governors to be sold across the island. The President's Media Division stated that the bookmark of heroes will be available to the public from tomorrow onwards. The proceeds from the sales are to be handed over to the Ranaviro Seva Authority to be used for the welfare of war heroes. MPs Mahinda Yapa Bewardena, Dilan Pereira, C.B. Ratnaka and Pavitra Wanyarachi have announced today that they are resigning from their ministerial portfolios and the government. They elaborated on the reasons for this decision at a press conference convened today at the office of the opposition leader. The decentralized funds of MPs is a primary problem. When the government presented its interim budget, it said that previously MPs were given only 5 million and they will give 10 million. We have reached the end of the month of May. We have not received a cent. However, the Pradesh Sabha members of the UNP and divisional leaders and secretariats affiliated to them have been given funds. Therefore, we cannot agree with the program undertaken by this government. If this is a national government, all the ministers need to be treated as equals. They are simply attempting to create an environment where their party will achieve victory. We cannot be a part of that. We will be committed to the whole responsibility of the SLFP in Parliament. And we will render our support to the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and our leader, President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Eighty-five percent of the credit for the 20th Amendment to the Constitution belongs to the alliance headed by the SLFP. If you look at the operations of Ronald Vikramasinghe, he is engaged in acts of sabotage. This is something that he got by luck. However, he acts as he was elected by the people's mandate. When a person is operating under that luck, he will not see the government as one that was formed out of luck. The only persons who are excluded from that criteria are those who join based on the decisions made by the SLFP Central Working Committee. That includes Rajita Senaratna. We reached this decision in order to create an SLFP-led UPFA government with an SLFP Prime Minister under the leadership of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. We promised the people that we will contest the next parliamentary elections only after uniting the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. The first respondent is the Sri Lanka Freedom Party because it was the Sri Lanka Freedom Party that decided to go for elections two years ahead of the end of the term. When you take a look at the decisions taken by the Prime Minister, they are similar to those made by Hitler who was following autocracy. They are either suppressing all their opponents or taking them over to their sides. With this decision that we have taken, I hope that the ministers will gain the strength to move forward by rectifying their mistakes. I agree to the decision taken by the party based on two facts, that is to bring democratic reforms required by the country and to be a source of strength to the party and the supporters by joining the government. Looking at the past, the UNP is continuing its undemocratic and suppressive program. We know that we are committed to create an SLFP-led United People's Freedom Alliance government. While I was the Minister of State, the subject minister, Sajid Premadasa, was very cooperative. If I do not say this, I will be doing him an injustice. Ronald Vikramasinghe, who has no concept of working with two parties, needs to learn it. He could learn that from either President Maitri Pala Sirisena or Minister Sajid Premadasa. 
Sajid Premadas Mahatma ke paadam igena ganna puluwan kiyana eka me wela kiyanna to. Meanwhile, opposition leader Nimal Siripal de Silva says that Ranil Vikramasinghe has no right to remain in the position of Prime Minister. Issuing a communique, the opposition leader says it is regrettable that Ranil Vikramasinghe is portraying a public mandate that he does not possess by making political challenges. The opposition leader points out that the Prime Minister cannot suppress the operations of the opposition by making threats against him and the actions of the opposition. The communique issued by the opposition leader notes that the United National Party is portraying various forms of large-scale bribery and corruption through the media and that it has failed to find guilty any one of those said individuals before the judiciary. The statement reads further that through the manipulation of the Financial Crimes Investigation Division, simple civil cases are cited as criminal cases and this is used to place persons in remand custody as political revenge. The opposition leader affirms that rather than presenting false allegations, one needs to think deeply as to what people's decision would be on one's actions. In the communique, opposition leader Nimal Siripali de Silva says the people would provide the appropriate response at the upcoming general election. On to one of our headline stories. The Court of Appeal rejected an application filed seeking an interim order preventing Harin Fernando from functioning as the Chief Minister of the Uber Province. The court rejected the application seeking the interim order after considering the writ petition submitted by the General Secretary and a Provincial Councillor of the United People's Freedom Alliance. The Court of Appeal announced three decisions today on this petition. One was the request made to abolish the Gazette issued announcing that Harin Fernando has been appointed as the Chief Minister has been rejected by the Court of Appeal. The application made seeking an interim order preventing Harin Fernando from operating as the Chief Minister was also rejected. Some have come to Colombo today to be sworn in as ministers. They were having hopes of becoming ministers. Today those attempts have been foiled. We are proud that what we were hoping for transpired through the independence of the judiciary. We hope to meet in the future and discuss this and present facts so that the correct decision will be made. The UPF is in power in the Uber Provincial Council. The current Chief Minister has robbed that people's power. This is not regarding the court order. The current Chief Minister has no moral right to move councillors of a defeated council in order to obtain power. We hope to prove this claim in the future. The Rambumi Rally for Unity, which is carrying the message of national unity across the island, arrived at Nathandia this afternoon. Day 14 of the Rambumi Rally commenced its journey from Shilau today. A grand acknowledgement was shown for the Ranbumi rally which commenced its journey from Chilau this morning. The fishing community blessed the rally with great enthusiasm. Children presented colourful performances at the Ranbumi rally which is spreading the message of peace in the villagers, bringing the country together, casting aside divisions of ethnicity and religion. These people are coming together, keeping the national flag close to their hearts with singular purpose, divide of all divisions of ethnicity, religion or caste, to place a symbol of their commitment to unity and the sustainable development of their beloved motherland. <laughs> The people etched their mark on the Ranbumi rally for unity, a step towards building a peaceful country. Sirini Sarusar, Meranigus, 
Looking at the performance of these children, I realized how we live in unity devoid of caste and creed. We are thankful for Sirius of undertaking such an endeavor to bring the country together. There were after the Ranbumi rally set off to its 41st stop of Madampe amidst much well wishes. Three wheeler drivers in Chilau also joined the procession. The inhabitants of Madampe joined the Ranbumi rally travelling from village to village for the development of the nation. Residents welcomed the rally with a cultural performance. As the Mahasanga, we see this is a practical program to be implemented in society. This is a good program to bring about reconciliation. This program reaffirms reconciliation in the country. Such programs increase the peace and reconciliation in the country. This is a program that will ensure that the people feel peace and reconciliation. The people of Madampe etched their mark on the brick of the Ranbumi rally in a pledge for peace and coexistence. The Ranbumi rally, which is the first program of its kind spreading the message of national unity, arrived in North Tandia to an enthusiastic welcome from the people. Here, the One Bumi Rally was welcomed by the Eastern Band of the Dhammisar Mahavidyalay in North Tandia to the tunes of the official song composed by the MTV MBC Media Networks for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The people of North Tandia who welcomed the Ranbumi Valley with a cultural ceremony etched their mark on the brick. We came here from Maoya. We missed the rally in Madampe. This is a good initiative. As the youth from the Puttalam district, we are fortunate to have joined with you. The One Bumi National Unity Valley, which will travel across 1,500 villages in 40 days, will travel from Nigambo to Kuliapitya, where Sandalankava tomorrow. On to more local news, the price of a warrant of the Reef Comber Company mentioned by the Prime Minister in Parliament recently has plunged to 10 cents as of today. Speaking in Parliament recently, the Prime Minister called for probes into activities surrounding several listed companies, including Reef Comber. The all share price index at the Colombo stock market stood at 1,500 points just before the war ended in 2009. Market capitalization during this period stood at approximately 1 trillion rupees, with an average daily turnover of 460 million rupees. Within a short span of two years, in February 2011, the ASPI had risen astronomically to 7,800 points, with market capitalization at 2.3 trillion rupees and an average daily turnover of 2.3 billion rupees. The bubble peaked in February 2011 and deflated subsequently, reaching a low point in April 2012. The ASPI took a nosedive almost as fast as it had risen, falling to 4,700 points, with market capitalization reducing to 1.8 trillion. Speaking in Parliament recently, the Prime Minister called for probes into market manipulation. Take for example Dilit Jaiweer. His role in the Colombo Land and Development Company and Reef Combe have to be probed by the authorities. Another example is Scott Newman and Kosala Hingama. Their roles in the environment resource investment require very close scrutiny. Given that the Prime Minister has called for probes, there are several questions which must now be answered by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Who are the dons of the stock market mafia? 
who manipulated the CSE, who took the retail investors for a ride, whose patronage did they have, political or otherwise? The Reef Comber Company, which the Prime Minister referred to, currently operates with a change of name to Citrus Leisure. The price of Citrus Leisure shares, trading under the code Reef N0000, stood constant from October 1st to November 2nd, 2010, around the 20 rupee mark. However, between the 2nd and 9th of November, the share price skyrocketed by 255% to 71 rupees and 20 cents per share. The price of a Citrus Leisure warrant which trades under the code Reef W0019, stood at 2 rupees on the 6th of June 2012 and by the 20th of June 2012 had increased to 8 rupees, an increase of 300%. These warrants are now priced at 10 cents. News First is in possession of this bought-sold contract note pertaining to a transaction carried out on the 19th of May, which bears testament to this. Shouldn't a proper investigation be carried out into the drastic reduction of the share prices within a short span of three years? Opposition MPs called for a debate on the report of the three-member committee appointed to investigate the alleged treasury bond scam involving the governor of the central bank. Tensions flared in parliament shortly after Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe took the floor. Honorable Speaker, there are several important points that have been raised in this report. Thereby, we believe that it is appropriate that we discuss the matters raised in this report without any further delay. Honourable Speaker, you made a decision on this matter yesterday. You decided that the report should be submitted to COPE Committee and that they would have two weeks to submit a report. The motion presented by the Honourable GL Pires is in violation of your order. We are only discussing the contents of the report. We are not discussing anything outside the report. I cannot understand why the debate that was agreed to at the party leaders meeting is not being granted now. Honourable Speaker, we must have that debate. Thereby, an opportunity should be given in Parliament to take this report up for debate. I think having read the report also of the committee, it is absolutely essential that this be debated thoroughly in Parliament. Taking a look at our developing story tonight, 130 persons who behaved in a disruptive manner opposite the Jaffna court demanding punishment for the suspects in connection with the rape and murder of a schoolgirl in Jaffna have been remanded. Police media spokesperson ASP Ruan Gunasekar has said that they were arrested on charges of damaging state property. ASP Ruan Gunasekar added that 47 suspects have been remanded till the 1st of next month, 43 suspects till the 3rd of next month and 40 other suspects till the 4th of next month. A protest was staged opposite the Waunia District Secretariat today demanding the immediate enforcement of the law with regard to the rape and murder. Our correspondent stated that shops were closed as a sign of protest. 
Several other areas also experienced protests. Roads were also blocked due to these protests. Demonstrations were also held in Kilinochi in protest of the rape and murder of the school girl. The residents of Muletivu demanded that the law be strictly enforced against the accused. Protests were staged in Batiklo demanding that authorities take steps to ensure that the crimes are not repeated in the future. The residents of Trincomalee too protested against the rape and murder of the school girl. <laughs> We conducted the post-mortem examination. We requested the courts to make the necessary arrangements for a DNA test. We are also conducting DNA tests on the nine suspects in relation to the murder of the schoolgirl. The IGP handed over the investigations to the Criminal Investigations Department to examine the death and rape. That team has been involved in investigations from the day before yesterday. The police have already recorded statements and Shashi Kumar is being investigated since last night. Meanwhile, various views were expressed in Parliament yesterday and today in relation to the incident. We have to investigate the reasons behind such murders. Armed groups are still operating, especially in the north. Such incidents have been previously reported from the Punkuri TV area. What is the reason behind such incidents being reported from only this area in the north? Even after four months have passed since the new government was formed, steps have not been taken to dismantle such groups. They are using the innocent people for their own benefit. A member of the Belenay Pradesh Sabha is also among the ten suspects. Then what is the background of this incident? Such an armed group has occupied a residence along Stanley Road in Jaffna. Although there is a possibility for the owner of the house to charge two million per month, the group is still occupying the house. This is the situation in Manipai. I have informed the Prime Minister and the Defence Secretary. This government needs to act for those who committed themselves for good governance. However, no such action has been taken so far. <laughs> An individual who arrived from Switzerland too has been arrested in relation to the incident. We have been informed that some persons tried to protect the suspect at the airport. He is a member of the TNA. An individual named Tamil Maran has tried to protect the suspect. It is sad that members of the TNA are involved in such acts. Meanwhile, questions were raised in relation to the issue at a police media briefing held in Jaffna today. This individual named Tamil Maran is a resident of that village. After the murder of this schoolgirl, we convened in the area. We wanted to ensure the peace in the area. We required the assistance of the locals to prevent the spread of crime. Under the community police concept, we convened to the people and the journalists and others in the area. The intellectuals, businessmen and many others in the area convened at this meeting. Tamil Maran is one who is a resident of that area. The police needs to conduct more investigations to ascertain if the evidence is true or false to be convinced. The judiciary too needs to be convinced. Here with news first, another phase of the Diri Savia loan program took place in Katuana Hampanthutu today. The event was presided over by Sajit Premadasa, Minister of Housing and Samurti. The program was held at the Kohom Porwa Vihare in Katuana and loans were presented to 85 low-income families in the Katuana area. Some are saying that we should not betray the victory that was achieved by the war heroes. When they are saying such things, what has happened today? All the countries that were not in good terms with us say that good governance is in play in Sri Lanka. What happens then? The plans that were afoot to take persons to the gallows and the electric chair have been foiled. This will provide relief to the war heroes. I need to mention that we will never betray the war heroes of our country. Tonight on our investigative journalism segment Action TV, we present the final part of our ongoing investigation into the third phase of the Colombo Outer Ring Road project. Action TV revealed yesterday that construction on the 9.32 km long third phase of the Colombo Outer Wing Road project is being undertaken with amendments to the original plan. As per the amendments, what will be constructed is a four-lane highway instead of a six-lane highway, reducing the length of the road that will be built in the form of a flyover, reducing the height of the flyover section and cancelling the Madhumagala interchange, which was mentioned in the original plan. 
These records show that the amendments were brought about following discussions held between Road Development Authority officials and the chairman of the three-member committee appointed by the subject minister to review the project on the 18th of March. According to these records, the committee chairman has participated in these talks, having already arrived at the conclusion that the project should be amended and thereby the cost reduced. It is possible that the committee chairman reached this conclusion being unaware that the cost could not be negotiated with the Chinese company to which the contract has been entrusted. This report drafted by the committee chairman five days after the meeting with the RDA officials states that there is no written evidence to justify the claim that the price submitted by the Chinese company in question is higher than what was approved by the cabinet in 2013. As such, it is quite obvious that the only way the cost of construction can be reduced is through cutting back on what is being constructed. Through the omissions to the plan, the original cost of 66.698 billion rupees reduces to 41.384 billion rupees. Thereby, a sum of 25.305 billion rupees is being saved through the amending of the plan. However, as per this document approved by the cabinet after it was submitted by the subject minister on the 22nd of April, the entire sum of 66.698 million rupees is to be paid to the Chinese company in question and no money will be saved. This is because it has been decided to pay the more than 25 billion rupees to be saved to the same Chinese company to construct an extension of the Colombo Outer Ring Road which should run to Gampaha. This is taking place as per the recommendations made by the minister's three-member committee. Incidentally, it must be noted that the committee's responsibility was to make recommendations to save an expenditure and not to make proposals for new projects that would cost more money. The extension for which the contract has been granted to the Chinese company without following any allocation procedure is not included in the original plan for the Colombo Outer Ring Road. Thereby, it cannot be considered essential. It is also possible that the 25 billion rupees may not suffice for the expenditure on this extension. Shouldn't investigations be held to determine what the relevant authorities are up to on the basis that an act of fraud or corruption could occur? Secretary to the President, this is over to you. An event organized by the International Buddhist Summit with the aim of creating religious harmony was held in Jaffna yesterday. The event, which was held at the Karuna Hall in Jaffna, saw the attendance of a group including members of the Buddhist clergy, Minister of Resettlement, Reconstruction and Hindu Religious Affairs DM Swaminathan and Minister of Buddhasasana Karu Jaya Surya. The event was also graced by a Buddhist delegation from India as well as a Chairman of the Sri Lanka Mahabodhi Society, Venerable Banagala Upathisathera, and Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayawadanapura, Venerable Professor Billam Villa Vimala Dharma Thera. The Ministry of Sports says that it has found evidence pertaining to the allegations made against several members of the management of the Sri Lanka women's cricket team over sexual harassment. Issuing a communique today, the Ministry of Sports says that Minister of Sports will take disciplinary action against those found guilty of these allegations. The communique goes on to read that the recommendations of the committee appointed to investigate allegations will be produced to the interim committee of SLC and advice will be given to act on those recommendations. The investigative committee report to probe the allegations of the women's team management seeking sexual bribes from players was submitted to the Minister of Sports yesterday. Just a reminder, if you missed out on any of the stories we just aired, you can log on to our website, www.newsfirst.lk. My name is Sonali Wani Gababuke. And I'm Nadim Majid. Before we leave you, Sonali and I would like to share a thought that we think is pertinent in these trying times. Society is judged by how it treats its weakest members. Good night and good luck.